today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this video. My name is Hayley Hartwell and I am the founder of Hartwell Healing, which is a space that I've created offering a wide range of alternative medicine therapies that can help people on all levels, whether it be the mind, the body, the soul, through forms of detoxing or maybe trauma work or body work or mindfulness practices. I am also the proud co-founder of Cambo Essence alongside my partner Lucy Radford and together we are offering and hosting ceremonies for all people that are feeling called by the frog to come do some healing as the frog is an intelligence beyond our capacity as humans to comprehend and that brings us great teachings that we can learn and integrate into our human life and work through problems that we can end up attaining our true life's mission and fulfilling our purpose. Today, the purpose of this video is to talk about frequently asked questions. And I thought this would be quite a useful tool to have that if you have any questions that are unanswered or perhaps you might have not even thought of the questions that might be useful to you, and this will help you better prepare, become well informed, and also ensures that you have a brilliant ceremony every time. So let's begin. So the first most commonly asked question is, what is Cambo? People always coming to me and just saying, I just heard you get burnt, you have to drink lots of water and you vomit. <laughs> just relax. <laughs> it's a little bit more in depth than that. But not quite, but not, not quite either. So cambo is a waxy secretion that is extracted from a giant green monkey tree frog that's sourced directly from the Amazonian rainforest. Its scientific name is known as Philomedusa bicolor. Philomedusa bicolor. Cambo's name or its origin is specifically sourced from Peru, but if we're going over to Brazil, in Brazilian it's known as sapo. So there are many names given to this frog, such as giant monkey green tree frog, sapo, cambo, philomedusa bicolor. So it just shows you that from South America, how many lives this beautiful medicine has actually touched. Next question, where does Cambo come from? There is a bit of a debate going back to the origins of where Cambo has been sourced because there's a fight between the Brazilians and the Peruvians saying that they were the ones who discovered the medicine. There's a story that has originated or is a belief that we've heard that there was a great healer in a village called Kampum and as a shaman and the healer of the village they are the ones that drink the ayahuasca and then they can see visions on how to heal their people that come to them that are sick. The way that we traditionally now drink plant medicine is a very westernized way and was not the actual original way that we didn't need to drink the medicines. It was the shamans who did and they could tell us how to correct ourselves. Turned out one day in the village, Kampum was presented with so many people that were just terribly, terribly sick and he didn't know to help them so he drank the ayahuasca and then he went wandering off into the forest and then he had visions that he was guided to a specific tree and there was a frog sitting there on a branch so he was told to cut the branch down take the frog extract this medicine off it burn people put this medicine on and people would literally purge um, the illness away he woke up and then he went to the tree, he ended up finding the frog, he did exactly what his visions told him to do. And just like that, miraculously, everyone started healing and everyone became much better. So he ended up dedicating his life to the medicine. And then the day he died, he said his spirit morphed into the energy with the frog. And that's the origin of how his name came about with Cambo and Kampum. Interesting, you know. The next frequently asked question is, is Cambo a psychedelic? I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but the answer is no. However, what I have experienced 
term holding ceremonies that people who are very open or people who have work with their third eyes do see some visuals or maybe some lights or some geometric shapes so anything is possible but it's not directly a psychoactive medicine that will lead you on a trip compared to other medicines such as ayahuasca next question is cambo addictive no it is not addictive so the next question i get asked is how often should one do cambo and the answer is very subjective to the individual. It depends on your intentions of why you're coming. It depends on what you need and how quickly you're wanting to progress and break through massive blockages. And also just genuinely when the frog is calling you. It's a really, really beautiful and interesting experience to have when you just know the frog is saying it's time to come to the medicine. It's something that you only understand once you experienced it but it will be forever as if your teacher's calling you back to class. Can anyone take Cambo? The answer is no. Not everyone can take Cambo. There are certain contraindications which are very, very, very important to read prior to agreeing to come to a ceremony. And the main ones are, but not non-exhaustive, is more related to heart conditions anything that's heart related because when you receive the medicine your heart will start to elevate and go through a process and you'll start to experience a lot of heat circulating around the body and we don't want you to be any way or form compromised because the whole point of being a practitioner is that i'm supposed to hold space for you and I'm supposed to do it in the best way and form that's according to health and safety guidelines also, there's specific type of, types of autoimmune diseases that can prohibit receiving this medicine. And also, if you're pregnant, under the age of 18, have epilepsy, and also certain mental health conditions that will prevent you from receiving this treatment. The next question I get is, can I receive Cambo if I'm taking certain medications or supplements? The answer is, it depends. This is really important that when you want to come for a treatment or ceremony that you clearly communicate and indicate everything that you are taking within the last six months as there might be something that could contraindicate with the treatment that you're receiving. It's very important to note that Cambo is so powerful that it can literally get everything out your body so it could then counteract if you're using medication for purposes of living um, and without it you would die then that would potentially become something that would be contraindicated also it's really important to note that on the day of ceremony if you are taking medication that you do not take it because the medicine will just extract it out your body and then sort of be away so if you have to take medication you can take it after the ceremony again just obviously be aware to advise us as practitioners what you are going through it's really important to ensure that you fully disclose everything that you are taking so that we as practitioners can be fully informed and then can tell you best if you're allowed to come for treatment or best how to facilitate your treatment with or without your medication so the next question i get asked is can i do cambo with other plant medicines it will really depend on what plant medicines you have. So again, it's really, really important to fully disclose within the last six months what ceremonies you've been attending other alternative medicines and also your intentions for the next, uh, say, three to six months of ceremonies because there may be certain medicines that contraindicate. For example, um, you cannot do Bufo and Cambo together, but you can do Cambo and Ayahuasca together or Cambo and San Pedro together and also depending on which one is which goes first. So you can do Cambo and then a plant medicine, but not necessarily a plant medicine and then the Cambo. Right, because besides for potential effects, it's also just going to be ruining the integration of the sacred medicine that you're doing. And also you're not really fully giving the time and respect to it if you're just going to keep going and hopping between medicines because this is a whole lifelong integration process that we need to really delve deeply into and not rush things. Next question, is Cambo illegal? 
The answer is no, Cambo is not illegal. I have a belief that because of the wide range healing benefits, it's gonna most likely become difficult, just like all other plant medicines that are widely available because of what healing it achieves. And that would end up if everyone started doing Cambo, taking away from money-making industries that are thriving on the illness of people, the sickness of people. It's really important that we respect this medicine and use it in a way that's used in some form of discretion, but at the same time be open to share with people to spread the green light. Next question I get asked is, is Cambo toxic? The answer is no, Cambo is not toxic. So toxicology reports, there's a lot of scientific studies that have been performed on this medicine. And actually what has been found is a, a significant amount of peptides and peptides are a branch chain of amino acids, which basically means it's the fundamental building blocks of anything that's been created in our body, whether it be our bones, our muscles, our tissues, our cells, our nerves, etc. Next question I get asked a lot is, how do I prepare for Cambo? Do I have to change my diet or what must I do? So the answer ideally is yes. Just like you prepare for a diet to do plant medicine, it's the same to show the same respect for the Cambo medicine. It's a very physical detoxing medicine. So it's really good that you can ensure that when the medicine goes through, it's not going to be entering into blocked channels, maybe with people who have dairy or maybe excessive amounts of meat, creating a lot of inflammation. With dairy, it's a lot of mucus uh, buildup. So it'd be really good to start going more plant-based and usually people who enter into this realm or field of uh, work, you find slowly that you will start to become more of a vegan than anything else because it's all about connecting with the plants. A lot of the meat that we're eating is really not good because of all the pharmaceuticals, all of the antibiotics that are going in. And it creates a lot of inflammation in our bodies and makes us sick and lethargic. As well as preventing or not eating meat because of ethical reasons of how animals are treated and slaughtered. And we're taking on that really bad energy through that, through consumption. So following a plant-based diet is highly recommended. I would also say that, which I do recommend to all my clients, is that at least one week before, if you can stop doing any recreational drugs, if you can stop drinking for at least a week, I know it's not always easy, but just see this as a, as a meditation or a practice that you're looking after your temple, so you can really and really truly be able just to completely let go of everything when you enter the ceremony space. And that applies the same as after. So obviously just be very respectful that your body is now more of a clean temple, that you can just treat it with respect and not put junk into it. So what I find is really important is to balance out your electrolytes. So electrolytes are just managing the sodium or salt content within your body, within your cells. Obviously within ceremony, because people have to drink a lot of water, that can compromise your electrolyte levels. So some really good things to do is just add a lot of salt to your food or drink something salty or what's really, really powerful and one of the best electrolyte replacements is drinking coconut water. So you can do that before and after ceremony and you just get a really good organic brand. <laughs> so the next question I always get asked is, will I vomit? The answer is perhaps. And I like to flip that and say, we don't want to use the word vomit. We'd like to always use the word purge because purge means it's something just more than the physical. It's something on an energetic or an emotional state too. And purging in this work can be in any way, shape or form. It can be crying. It can be vomiting. It can be going, having a bottom purge on the toilet. It can be sweating. It can be making sounds, it can be singing, it can be laughing. There's really so many different things I've seen and experienced. 
and it's not limited to an individual because even the same person throughout different ceremonies can experience different things and it's just really all about embracing how the frog is trying to help you release whatever is it that you're trying to let go for session with your intention but most likely you're gonna vomit <laughs> need to clear this up it's not that the medicine makes you sick and you vomit the medicine is helping leach out being as in removing out of your body all the toxins that you have put in all the alcohol all the drugs all the bad food all the sugar all the stress even stuff inherited from your family so ancestral stuff it's all lurking here in your body and stuck in hiding the medicine is being like a policeman and getting the light and be like, hey, you get out, get out, get out, get out. Then what is the most natural way for your body to release something that is toxic and poisonous? It's through either purging, upper, upper purge, bottom purge, sweating, crying, in any way, shape or form. So the next question is, how long does a treatment last? So a ceremony is really dependent on the number of people. It can be anything from two to five hours, but the actual candle application time and process is between 20 to 40 minutes. So within that time frame of two to five hours, what actually goes on? So time will be allocated in the beginning to discuss treatments with people. It will be about having a consultation to understand where you're at, what is your intention, where would you like to receive points if you're practicing receiving the medicine. Then for any new people, we just have a, an explanation time. So just talking about the medicine, where it originates from, the history, what's going to happen in process. Then I will burn gates, so points on your body. Gates is done with an incense stick, this small, I can show you very small in relation to my finger you can see it's very tiny because it's really no incense standing right does it hurt so the question really depends on your pain tolerance your pain threshold i think if you've done waxing in your life or you've been tweezed your hair a couple of hairs been tweezed out of your body it's basically the same it only lasts for a second and then what i'll do is then i'll remove the first layer of skin from the bones so it exposes your lymphatic system so that when medicine gets applied, it can just absorb straight into your body. You will then be required to drink two liters of water. And trust me, you want to drink the water because it actually makes your process hell of a lot easier. Just like if someone's had a bad night or drank too much, then it's just whoosh, just gets all of the stuff out. And it's good because if your stomach is full of water or liquid, then when the products of toxins are leaching, out of your organs into your stomach then that will just flush right out quite easily then the points will be removed and you will have a radical rest period so this is a time where you will sleep because usually people are quite tired from the process it's a really strong intensive warrior medicine and they will have this time to basically integrate maybe ideas will come revelations will come this is also still a ceremonial process so this is also a time where people can start crying people can start going through a process people will have trauma release people can shake so it's still a beautiful time that we keep quiet and let people still be in their process and then after i will put dragon's blood so dragon's blood looks like this it's basically a sap that's extracted from a tree and it's put on your gates and it will help your gates scab it's an antimicrobial, antiparasitic uh, substance, so basically will prevent infection and will help you heal a lot faster than if you didn't have it on. Other two medicines that I work with as well, which can be in ceremony or after or before ceremony, it's optional, but it's there for people as well. So one is called Sananga. So it's just a liquid that is extracted from a root and well, it's eye drops that, to put it politely, really burn. They feel, it feels like battery acid, <laughs> but it's so worth it. It only lasts for a couple of minutes. And post this process, I always explain to people when you're lying on the floor, when you receive these eye drops, it's 
What do we sound like you're on a cloud and you go? And you just get into that really amazing place of stillness and calmness that everyone tries to achieve in meditation. In addition to that, it really is profound in healing a lot of eye conditions such as cataracts or any type of things that are in your eye. It opens up your pineal gland, it clears your third eye energetically. So when you go outside, colors are just so much more bright and bold. The world seems beautiful. And also, if you do this medicine consistently for six weeks, it can help clear depression. Or I should put a disclaimer, it may help clear depression. Um, the last medicine that I work with is called Rappe. Rappe is a snuff, so it's a powder which I've got in this lunchbox. And what Rappe is, is a combination of tobacco and various different plants that have been dried and then ground into a snuff. And we commonly say you pass the snuff, so it's called Rappe or Hape. And by passing the snuff, we use pipes called karupe or tepis, and this is one. And so what I do is I'll put the medicine in my hand and I'll fill it up, and then I'll put it in your nostril and I'll blow it. And I have to do the other nostril as well. And it's really profound, this medicine. So it can be... Well, in ceremony, this one has a specific intention as a purgative, but you can get lots of different, I'll call it, flavors that can help for meditation or for energy or for whatever purpose you're seeking. And that's really good. So it really helped work deeply, intensely through blockages because some people, when in ceremony, are unconsciously not wanting to let go of the reason why they came. As a result of this, we need to use some other medicine that can help break through that blockage and that can get you on your process again. Have an integration session and then food will be served because you have to fast for this treatment, at least 8 to 12 hours not eating beforehand. And then fruit is just so much more amazing and has so much more flavour because your senses and everything within your body are fully activated. Another big common question is, what happens when Cambo is applied to me? What will I experience? Again, the experience is quite unique per the individual, but the most common things is a sensation of heat will flush over your body. And when you are the practitioner observing the person, you actually see them go red. So it's as if you see the blood circulating everywhere. Some people can sweat. They'll feel the sensation of heat like rising up the body. And then they'll feel the head start to make sounds like wah, 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 wah. Some people get clammy hands. And then after some time when your blood pressure rises and starts to come back to normality, it will then slowly decrease. And then you'll start to experience sensations of nausea. Some people experience cramping sensations in their stomach. Some people who have ailments or specific problematic areas, so they'll feel the medicine going in there. For example, I know people with broken wrists or, sorry, broken bones. I had a broken wrist. Um, you can feel the medicine go directly there and doing its work on an energetic as well as physical state to remove the residue of whatever hasn't completely healed in there. And then you'll then likely purge, and purge again can be either upper purge, bottom purge, sweat, tears, crying, laughing, anything, you name it. And there is sometimes the risk that people can faint and there's a little window period that when your blood pressure just goes below normal and that's what the practitioner is here for but it's not a very common thing but it is something that can happen and something that you should be aware of. But the next question I get asked is how many treatments do I need? Again, this is very subjective. Traditionally, it's been said that you need to do three cambos within a moon cycle, or otherwise known in our realm as a calendar month. And it's really, really powerful because if you keep doing treatments that are quite close to each other, then you can really get a lot deeper in terms of working through those layers. Because I always see it as, we here with our, our work and our blockages. So we do camber 
it removes the layer and then you've got all of that emptiness but if you then go back to your day-to-day -day and you only come to camber quite a few months later then you'll see that this layer might have rebuilt itself if you're not really doing the work and making the changes and the transformations that you need to do but if you remove that layer originally and then you end up doing another session back to back or within a close amount of time remove another layer and you really can get deep down into a profound work that you know that's what we're really going for we're going for the gold the root stuff you know the really deep underlying core issues so that's what's recommended realistically speaking the frog is an intelligence so once it's in your dna it's part of you it restructures your dna you become a frog in essence right camber essence so just come when the frog is calling you and you have to see, is this a medicine that you love? Because the more you do it, the more work you're going to work through. It's really, really profound in this way that you need, people are having results almost within a day. Their lives are changing. So it's really worth it. But this is why I think the process is not as easy as it can be. Because if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. The fact that you have to work really hard to get the results... It might not be something that you like to do as often, but I've done a whole series of things. I've done a few treatments in a month, done it over a year, I've done um, monthly treatments. I've done quite um, varied types of treatments and I would say it's beautiful and I've, I've really benefited from it. The next question I get asked is how many types of treatments that you get? So I am able to offer a wide range of of different treatments so the first one that you will do as a first time is called a basic treatment and as a woman you'll have it done on your right leg as a man you'll do it on your left arm but with more practice and also depending on what is your reason or intention for coming to ceremony for example addiction for chronic pain management or for physical detox that will also depict what kind of or emotional issues for example that will depict the kind of treatment so we can maybe do auricular therapy, we can do cambo in your ears, we can do on your chakras, so on your back. We can do meridian type treatments, so that's going on specific points in your body that might um, be a result of that you might have blocked energy channels and we just want to open that up. It can also be that you want to do the cambo warrior, which is doing three cambos in three hours. Very intense, a huge initiation, but can really, really, really take you very 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 deep and remove some deep blockages that if you're ready for it's not everyone's cup of tea i used to offer a special the special treatment which is just a combination of all of the above we can have meridian chakra normal and ear just again depends on you and on consultation of what we're really trying to work for or work through all right guys so I think I've answered quite a few questions, but most are very common. However, I can't say I've answered all the questions. So if you guys have any other questions that you want me to answer, please write them down in the box below and I'll be so happy to answer them for you. And if you're interested in potentially joining in for a ceremony, please follow the link below to the website of my partner and I. And we will gladly be able to assist you. We're based both in London and in Coventry. And we're able to travel to other people, even internationally, if there's sufficient amount of participants as well. So we're here to spread the green love, to spread the green light. And thank you all for your time. And again, if anything you need to have clarified or have any additional questions, I'll be happy to answer. And please subscribe so we can get this green light going and spreading the love further as much as possible that we can bring everyone back to a sense of oneness, a sense of healing together. Okay, lots of love. Aho.